So I think a great place to start would just to be to get a little bit of a history of, of what has Car Who been up to? How did they come into being? Uh, and where are you guys at now? Yeah, good question. The uh, Yeah, Car Who, we joke just, you know, because our brand is so small, but yet so old that it's the oldest brand you've never heard of. Um, <laughs> certainly working to change that and are, are slowly accomplishing uh, that task. But yeah, so Car Who is originally from Finland. It was started in 1916. Um, started making uh, skis and discuses. So it's always been about sort of uh, like forward movement um, and efficiency. Uh, yeah, started making running shoes in the, you know, shortly thereafter. Um, so we have, you know, archive, uh, you know, images and actually some old like physical shoes from the 40s, 50s, 60s uh, that, you know, have the Three Stripes logo on the shoe before we sold the Three Stripes to our friends in Germany for reportedly 1,600 euros and two bottles of whiskey. What people don't know that it was two <laughs> premium bottles of whiskey. Uh, so <laughs> it, it was well, well worth the uh, transfer of the Three Stripes. But no, the Three Stripes- That's crazy. Yeah, so it's it's kind of a funny story that links us to uh, you know other brands in the in the running world, um, but yeah, the functionally like the three stripes which were just a way to like secure the uh, the upper around the foot. It was the functional way to provide support and and was more functional. Then obviously it was then turned into a uh, a branding item, um, and that's that's when Car who went to a um, an M logo or an M design which. Again, it's just a way to functionally like secure the the shoe around the foot, um, and that's that's exactly yeah. So we still use yeah. the M logo uh, to this day. Um, yeah. So other innovations that Carhu has had included air cushioning. Um, we we in the seventies invented air cushioning, and so we actually have a patent and and see the patent that uh, predates. Another brand that's that is from uh, Oregon, uh, and they they were always you know kind of losing Jordan, Jordan, and, and some of uh, Prefontaine's biggest rivals were the Finns. So the Flying Finns have been uh, some of the the best runners. Did we did we just lost you there for a second? We, Don't worry. we lost yeah, you for just a for a second. second. Yeah. All right, sorry about that. Hopefully the internet connection See, stays. Where'd I cut out? You, you were talking about uh, a company in Oregon. Okay, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so the company in Oregon, Nike, right, was, uh, you know, early employees being Prefontaine, his coach, Bowerman, uh, obviously Phil Knight, who's still the chairman there. Um, so some of Prefontaine's rivals were the Finns. So the, the, the flying Finns were some of the best runners in the world. And so he invited uh, uh, some runners to attend uh, a series of meets on the West Coast. And we actually have pictures of um, Finns sitting at Hayward Field before it was torn down and remade into what it is, what it is currently. Um, of the Finns with uh, a, a shoe called the Champion Air or Mastari in front of them. And that was one of the first shoes to have air cushioning. So uh, mm -hmm. three stripes logos to Adidas to having a, a patented air cushioning system um, prior to you know, the largest footwear maker in the world. We have some unique, Carhu has some really unique connections in the running industry. Um, yeah, so currently, you know, we work here in the U.S. and, and targeted markets in Europe uh, on a collection that uh, is specific to, you know, developing the, like, the, the most comfortable and efficient feel and uh, riding shoe. Um, we, we usually use select retail partners to, uh, 
to distribute our, our assortment. And for a long time, Carhu had kind of gone away from the US market. Hmm. And it wasn't until maybe about 10 years ago where we sort of re-entered it um, and have been revitalizing it since then. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's been, a you know, again, like Carhu has a very unique history. Uh, I think for the shoe nerds out there, they appreciate it. Mm -hmm. For the, the, the we, we have two sides of the business. We have our like performance running assortment. And then we also have a um, lifestyle collection. So for the lifestyle, which is, it's the, the, which is dope, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So the sneaker, I, head, I love their stuff, you know, is, is uh, they really appreciate, I think, like the authenticity of a historical running brand. They like when they, you know, delve into a brand, they, they discover that there's a lot more there to it than just, you know, the, the trendy shoes that can, uh, you know, come up with designs that just are there for fashion purposes, but they actually discover that, you know, Carhu is a, a brand uh, rich in history. So we have that. So, but on our, on our running side, I'm not sure if uh, runners outside of the, the people that are super curious about, uh, you know, running brands and footwear technology and stuff, that it's coming from somewhere, uh, really care about a brand's history, but it is, it is nice to have it. Um, it is nice yeah. to, to find um, old images of guys winning the Boston Marathon in car shoes to, you know, uh, Pablo Nermi running in car shoes and, and whatnot. So that is something that uh, uh, we, we appreciate and that we try to take, um, you take the there's some great <clears throat> there's some great value in having in having that history where it's not we're just trying to invent ourselves like you've come out of something that's been created and is passing on um style and ideas and um, technology um right